Hello and welcome back to the vault, Lambda Gap Major, and this is a review of the Italian Tier 5 Premium Cruiser Duca di Osta, available for 10,000 doubloons. Now, this is a Tier 4 and 5 game of Domination on New Dawn. On the enemy team, we have a Matsuki, a Farragut, a Fubuki, a Farragut, a uh, Ferrataka, sorry, Bedoini, Torrento, Devonshire, Congo, Fuso. So, spawn on the right, we're going to see if we can play a bit of the right, I guess you could say. So, uh, Duca di Osta, also give, to give her her full name, which you can see on the uh, stern of the ship, the Emmanuel Filiberto Duca di Osta, uh, was a Condo Titieri class uh, cruiser, um, which is basically a light, fast cruiser designed to counter French destroyers, and uh, she was commissioned in 1935. Uh, she served with the Italian Navy through World War II, serving both on Axis and Allied sides, and she was known to be a lucky ship. Uh, having taken no damage through the course of the Second World War. After the Second World War, she was uh, given as a war prize to the uh, Soviets, uh, where she continued to serve until she was uh, stricken in 1959 and scrapped in 1960. So, as always, in comparison to the Tech Tree ships, uh, in this case obviously the tier 5 cruisers. Um, so she has a just below average HP base of 29,700. She also has a below average torpedo reduction of only 7%. Uh, when it comes to the armour, it's nothing to get excited about I guess you could say, but let's go back to the port and have a look at that armour scheme. So back in the port, let's take a look at the armor of the Duca de Oster. Um, firstly, uh, you're going to note that the bow and stern plating is not exactly super thick. You're looking pretty much 16 millimeters is the best way to put it, uh, which can ricochet 8 inch AP, uh, but anything more than that is going to be going straight through your nose. So uh, only really capable of uh, angling against cruisers, I guess you could say. Um, up to, up to heavy cruisers, obviously excluding things like the Graf Spey. If we take that away, let's uh, jump onto the uh, superstructure. Now, obviously, we do have a bit of an armored conning tower, but the majority of the superstructure is only 13 millimeters thick, which uh, obviously makes it a farmable area of the ship. Uh, however, uh, it also means that larger caliber shells may over penetrate and not cause uh, much damage at all. Now, uh, going on to the uh, upper armoured belt, I guess you could say. Um, again, don't get all excited. It's only 20 millimeters of plating, which uh, it can resist 8 inch AP, um, or ricochet, I should say, obviously, if you're angled. Uh, however, that's not going to be stopping uh, much else beyond that calibre, unfortunately. And uh, the deck plating, uh, again, you're only looking at about 16 millimeters on the. Uh, on the deck which is a bit of a shame really um, so yeah you're not going to be skipping anything off the deck either if you're uh, in the ship so she's quite squishy as the best way to put it and obviously that means that uh, pretty much most of the ship is farmable uh, from uh, battleship caliber shells now we can jump onto the turrets and the barbettes. These are mostly covered in 30 to 90 millimeter plating, uh, depending where whether you're looking at the faces of the frontal plates of the turrets or whether you're looking at the barbettes. But yeah, it's just standard turret arrangement, and there's nothing really more to add in regards to that. Now, when we come to the Citadel and the lower armored belt, you have the torpedo defense, which is on the outside, and this is basically your outer belt, uh, which is 70 millimeters thick, which can ricochet battleship caliber. AP shells. However, you'll notice there's not a lot of it. And should a shell be coming in perfectly flat, which is very unlikely, then uh, it's going to skip off and won't be going to the citadel. However, you've got to think most shells are going to be coming in at a, at a higher angle. Uh, you've got to remember the battleships are going to be shooting down at your citadel, and therefore uh, it's not really that useful. The only thing it's going to be deflecting uh, would be probably. Um, things that you would be deflecting anyway. Uh, I mean, it's only going to be very close misses, I guess you could say. So that doesn't exactly fill me with excitement either. Now, when we come to the system, um, it is big. Um, best way to put it, it's long. It goes from the front turret to the rear turret. It is above water in most, well, pretty much most of its legs. It does have this funny rounded end, um, which I guess might help maybe ricochet something, but... Um, more than likely, if anything penetrates your ship, it will be uh, detonating 
uh, either above the citadel in the auxiliary armoured area of the ship uh, or where all it would be uh, going into your citadel unfortunately um, so she's a very fragile cruiser uh, very reliant on her speed and manoeuvrability well that's the arm scheme uh, back to the game so welcome back and uh, while we're working on Ms. Bedoyne we might as well start talking about the guns well she's got 8 6 inch guns in 4 dual gun turrets uh, A turret B turret super firing up front, and then we have X turret uh, super firing over Y turret at the rear. So you got like your pretty much your standard cruiser arrangement, I guess you could say. Just have a hunch that yeah, it's, mm, didn't quite aim it perfectly myself. Let me anticipate it on the fly there. Um, so. She's got the uh, shortest gun range, however, which is only 14.1 kilometers. It's not massively different, but it is uh, drastically shorter, I guess you could say. Hmm. Now, um, when it comes to the reload, uh, you have the second fastest reload, which is 7.5 seconds. You also have an average turret traverse speed. In this case, it's uh, 25.7 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. You have the joint second lowest HE shell damage however which is only 2100. You also have the lowest fire chance which is only 7% and the third lowest AP shell damage which is 3200. However take that into account with her reload speed of 7.5 seconds and you start to get a better idea of her DPMs. She has the fourth highest HE DPM uh, however she still has the joint lowest uh, fires per minute so uh, not a flame thrower in all honesty. Uh, she has an average AP DPM as well so she's not exactly lacking too much there. Uh, we, maybe we could use this trying to potentially when it comes to the torpedoes, obviously she has those classic Italian sea mines. Uh, she's got two tripled launchers uh, mounted one per side. These have the joint fastest uh, tube re launcher reload, I should say, which is uh, only 71 seconds. Uh, when it comes to the reload per tube, it is below average. Now, these torpedoes do have the second lowest torpedo damage, which is 13,367. They also have the joint shortest detection of 51 knots, but also the joint slowest speed of, uh, I should say, sorry, detection range of one kilometer and uh, a slowest speed of 51 knots. Um, so what that means is that these torpedoes will, if Detected at one kilometer, have the uh, give the enemy the shortest amount of time to respond to those torpedoes. However, should those torpedoes be spotted by something more substantial like uh, sonar, then what that does mean is that um, enemies will have a, a very long time to respond to these very slow torpedoes coming in. So uh, it's all a bit swings and roundabouts, I guess you could say. Now um, they also have the longest range or joint longest range of 12 kilometers. Now, when it comes to the uh, maneuverability of the ship, uh, you are the fastest at 36.5 knots, and she does have the fast trait. Uh, Fuso does scare me. Um, now, you have the joint second largest turning circle, which is 710 meters. Uh, furthermore, you have the second uh, fastest uh, rudder shift speed, which is 6.6 uh, .6 seconds base. Things are getting busy over here, aren't they? Right, sorry. Going, yes. Um, Going on to the concealment then, um, you have the hidden trait and you have the best detection by sea which is 10.4 kilometers, you have the smallest detection by the air as well which is only 6.2 kilometers and furthermore you have the smallest detection when firing smoke which is 4.7 kilometers and please can we find your sister there? Unfortunately it just doesn't make enough of a dent. I 
think this will be the end, uh, unless miracles happen. Uh, however, miracles do sometimes happen. I doubt they will. Um, but we can start talking about the consumables. Obviously, she comes with two sonars, which is very different to uh, what the most of the Italian cruisers come with. Um, now, this would be able to detect ships at four kilometers and detect torpedoes at 2.8 kilometers has a nice two second duration and a 180 second reload you also have three catapult fighters uh, these have a 100 second duration and a 80 second reload obviously all subject to change as and when carriers come in uh, if they do change it in any way now as always down in the description will be the modules and the command build used uh, in this case i've taken aim systems module one and steering gears module two now it's always worth mentioning that she does come with a very nice uh, Type 9 permanent camouflage. Um, obviously uh, you're only seeing part of it here as she slowly sinks. Um, but it is nice, obviously it does help with uh, your consume, consumption of camouflage as you could say. Wow, um, she's been an interesting ship to play, I have to admit. Uh, I do find the guns can be quite accurate at certain ranges. Uh, it seems like at like mid-range, sometimes the shells can have really nice tight clusters at times. Um, but yeah, she seems interesting enough. Um, if you're an Italian Navy collector, she's potentially of interest. Um, for myself, who's very much a Royal Navy collector, probably not as much interest. Uh, but I do like the Italian Navy, and so uh, she does seem to be quite a nice one to pick up if you are interested in that kind of light, fragile cruiser playstyle. Um, but yeah, so uh, while we wait, and we'll have a bit of Colonel Bogey's march as we go to the end screen. And here we are back at the end screen, and so 56,000 damage, 97 hits on target, 1 kill, 2 citadels, 2 fires, mm, nothing really happened with those torpedoes unfortunately, uh, 4 defender rooms though, and a capture assist which is quite nice, um, going on to team results, okay, um, about 500 more ship XP than the next best player on our team, that might explain why we lost, <laughs> I'm going to the economy screen, um, yeah, reasonable amount of credits coming in, obviously, uh, has an increased credit earning potential. In this case, the ship service cost was pretty much 30,000 credits, uh, which is quite nice. Um, all in all, um, very nice ship, uh, but probably not one I'd play often. I kind of feel like if I'm going to play tier 5, I'm, I'm going to stick to the Royal Navy cruisers. You know me. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this content, content feel free to subscribe. I say thank you to the subscribers and also to the patrons whose names will be appearing on the end screen. Uh, furthermore, I'd like to say down in the description is the command build, the modules, email address for the channel if you want to send, submit your own personal game captures for our community spotlight videos on a Monday, as well as the link to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, I'm the Gavin Major. I'm back to the port. Hey, hey, sail the wave. Here comes the galloping major. Bumpety, 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 bump. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down. I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, sail the wave. Here comes the galloping major.